Mabuhay! Welcome to Sing with Nanai Story Time. Today we're going to be reading a story called Pandisa Saves the Day. Of all the kids in school, Bandisal felt that she was the unluckiest. She did not like the way she looked. Her skin was too dark, she hated her flat nose, and she found her oblong face weird. Besides, who ever heard of a girl named Bandisal anyway? How she envied her classmates. There was croissant with her golden brown skin, tall nose and curves in all the right places. And there was Danish, who looked so fair and neat, with beauty marks here and there that reminded Pandisal of sweet raisins. Muffin's skin was brown too, but unlike Pandisal's, it had a luster that glowed and made her look so attractive. Many people in school liked Muffin because she was so sweet. Some people thought Donut had a rather odd shape, but it didn't matter because he always impressed people with his rich wardrobe. Sometimes he came to school all in white, much like the frosting on a cake. At other times, Donut wore chocolate-covered outfits or clothes the shade of strawberry milkshake. Honeybread was popular too. She got her name from her glossy complexion, which is exactly the same shade as honey. Honey often got into sticky situations, but since she was so nice, everyone always forgave her. Her brother, Superbread, was probably the fairest boy in class and was very smart too. He always had the right answers to everything. Their cousin, Breadstick, was very tall and slim, and she was sure she was going to be a famous fashion model someday. All of Pandisal's classmates lived in beautiful homes. Kwansan's parents had a lovely chalet on a hilltop with a sweeping view of the countryside from one long end to one long end. Honey and Superbread lived in a cozy cottage surrounded by a garden of roses, daisies, and sunflowers. Muffin lived in a ranch house with windows framed by pink and white curtains that cascaded all the way down to the hardwood floor. And Pandisal? Poor me, she thought. Every time she went home to the Nipa hut she shared with her parents and young brothers. Not only that, she also had to walk to school every day, across a rice field, past a river, and up and down the hillsides. At first, her father walked with her to school, but when she learned the way, she had to go alone. After days of doing that, her legs no longer ached, and she even found a secret trail that cut through the meadows and brought her to school much faster. Hmm, she found a shortcut. Their Nipa hut had bamboo slats for floor and doors made of sawali. Sometimes the cold wind would blow through the flimsy walls so to keep warm, Bandisal and her brothers would huddle under the blankets that their grandmother had woven for them. On weekends and after school, Bandisal had to do her share of the household chores. She washed all the dishes by hand with water from a pail that her father fetched from a nearby well. To polish the floor, Bandisal and her mother used large leaves plucked from a tree which removed all the dirt and made the floor look so shiny and bright. Television and radio were way too expensive for them, so for entertainment, the family would sing together. In the evenings, their mother taught Bandisal and her brothers all the songs she had learned as a child, and the family would often gather after supper to hear her sing of immortal love of the happy life in the countryside, and of an old pair of wooden shoes. 
Bandisal was gifted with her mother's lovely singing voice. In school, music was her favorite subject, and she would have joined the glee club, except she was too shy to audition. Oh. Do you like music? I love music class. Neither did Pandisal and her brothers have expensive toys. Instead, they made up their own games. They loved running in the open fields surrounding their nipahat, climbing up trees and playing sipa. Pandisal and her brothers had different kinds of sipa at home, which they would make out of old newspapers of brown paper bags. So this is the sipa. And in Filipino, sipa means to kick. You sipa. <laughs> you hit it. Bandisal's favorite sipa was a dainty pink and white one, which he had made out of the paper buntings left over from the town fiesta. Often, when they finished their chores early, Bandisal and her brothers would play sipa in their backyard. She became so good at it that she could kick the sipa up in the air all of 100 times without letting it fall to the ground. That's impressive. We're playing sipa. One day, the class went on a field trip with their teacher, Miss Flowers. The school driver, Mang Baking, drove them to a nature park where they could learn all about trees, flowers, and insects. There, they saw all kinds of fruit trees like mango and star apple, flowering plants like rosal and sampaguita, as well as colorful dragonflies, butterflies, ladybugs, and grasshoppers. Pandisal knew most of these creatures because they were plentiful in the fields where she and her brothers played on weekends. So they're going on a trip. They're going on a trip with Miss Flores and Mong Baking. Eek! Croissant shrieked when a wriggling insect landed on her. Don't be afraid, Pandisal said. It's only a dragonfly. Look, I can even catch it and it won't bite. Pandisa closed her thumb and forefinger on the dragonfly's wings and held it up for Croissant to see. Look, she pinched it so she could show. Croissant. Gross, Croissant said as she looked away. But by this time, Superbread and Donut had joined them and were fascinated by the dragonfly. Wow, you're brave, said Superbread. And Pandisa felt strangely proud of herself though it was really no big deal. Why, one time she had even caught a whole army of dragonflies, but she kept in a bottle before setting them free. When it was time for lunch, they all sat down on the picnic grounds and opened their lunch boxes. Mm, look, it's lunchtime and they're all ready to eat. Out came the hamburgers and french fries, the spaghetti, fried chicken, and pizza all neatly wrapped in aluminum foil. Croissant had a cheese souffle, while breadstick brought fettuccine with cream cheese. Oh my goodness, a lot of these foods are very North American. Suddenly, Bandisal felt ashamed of her brown paper bag. In it, she had rice, fish broiled in tomatoes and onions, and chicken adobo, all wrapped in banana leaves. Mmm, that sounds delicious, especially for Filipinos. Her mother had made sure Pandisal brought plenty of food so she could share them with her classmates. And her brothers had tucked in some bananas which they had picked from the tree in their backyard. Pandisal loved this food, but compared to those of her classmates, the rice and the fish and the adobo and the bananas suddenly looked so humble. Hmm, when we compare ourselves to others, we might not feel like we have uh, such good things. Aren't you going to eat? Miss Flores asked Pandisal. Uh, I forgot my baon. She lied. Baon is food that you're bringing to school or to work. Oh, but you must eat or you'll go hungry. Here, have some of my barbecue. Miss Flores gave her slices of charcoal boiled pork on bamboo skewers. See? She's hiding her brown paper bag with all her delicious Filipino food. Have some fettuccine, 
breadstick offered. And some fried chicken, said Donut. Soon everyone was sharing their baton with her. Bandisad felt grateful and sad at the same time. If only she could share her food with her classmates too. Hmm, that's too bad. It sounds like they could be missing out on such a yummy meal. When lunch was over, the children piled into the bus and Mong Baking got into the driver's seat to take them back to school. They had driven only for a few minutes when suddenly the bus stopped. Mong Baking got out and looked at the engine. He poked and he tapped and he poked and he tapped, but he could not figure out what was wrong. They were on a lonely country road with no house in sight. Finally, he decided to go for help. Stay here while I look for the nearest gas station, Mong Baking told Miss Flowers and the children. At first, they all sat very still, but before long, grew restless. Mong Baking sure is taking a long time, Danish said. I'm bored, complained Honeybread. I wish there was something we could do. Why don't we play a game, Miss Flowers suggested. But what game? Honeybread asked. We didn't bring our computer games and stuff. And I forgot my frisbee, Donut said. Hmm. Everyone looks so worried because their bus broke. I have my sipa. Right there. I have my sipa, Bandi suddenly volunteered. Sipa? Everyone turned to look at Bandisal. What in the world is that? Uh, it's a little toy. Bandisal suddenly wished she hadn't spoken. Well, show it to us, said Miss Flowers. We may be able to learn to play it too. Hmm, Miss Flowers had an open mind. Bandisal fished out the sipa from her pocket. It was her favorite sipa. The frilly pink and white one she had made from the paper buntings left over from the town fiesta. Far out, said Danish. But how do you play it? Everyone got down from the bus so Pandisal could show them how. She kicked the sipa up in the air with her foot. Once, twice, several times more until she reached a count of 20. Wow, that's really neat, said Muffin. Can I try it too? Oh, all the kids are open-minded to this new game. Soon everyone was having fun playing with the sipa. This sure is a great game, Breadstick said. And it's good exercise too, Superbread pointed out. Even Miss Flowers tried the sipa a few times and laughed when she could reach only a score of 10. But everyone marveled when Bandisal was able to kick the, the pink sipa up in the air all of 100 times. Wow, you sure are great at playing sipa, Breadstick said. I've had a lot of practice, Bandisal explained, remembering all those times when she and her brother played sipa on weekends. Oh, look at that! After the game, Everyone was hungry again, but they had all eaten their lunch and had nothing left to eat. Bandisa spoke up once more. I have some food in my paper bag if you want them, she offered shyly. Oh, so it looks like Bandisa is starting to feel a little bit more brave. Well, take it out and we can all share, Miss Flores said. Bandisa opened the banana leaves and spread out the rice the broiled fish, and the adobo. Hey, this is yummy, said Donut, as he spooned a bit of adobo and some rice. Oh, that looks delicious. Hmm? Got some of the, the broiled fish, tomatoes, rice, bananas on a banana leaf, dahon na saging. The others also loved the broiled fish and feasted on the sweet bananas. Fresh fruit is good for the health, Superbread told everyone between mouthfuls of food. Why didn't you tell us you brought along some food, Miss Flowers asked Bandisal. 
I was too ashamed, Pandisal admitted. I thought you might find this food yucky. Has anyone ever thought that your Filipino food was yucky? Me too, but it's not yucky at all. It's delicious. Oh, but this is a great change from all the souffles, quiches, and bisques that we have at home. You should give us the recipe, said Croissant. Bandisa glowed. Wow, how wonderful to be able to share something with her classmates. After they had eaten, the children sat cozily together to rest and wait for mung baking. Who knows how to sing, Miss Flora said. Who knows how to sing, Miss Flores asked. Not me, Muffin croaked. I almost flunked music. Not me either, Superbread admitted. I'd rather play Scrabble. Perhaps Bandisal can sing, suggested Danish. I heard her humming once in school. Soon Bandisal was singing Akundiman. Look at all the beautiful music that she was sharing. Bandisal sang and sang all the songs her mother taught her. Dahisayo na iskong mabuhay. Dahisayo hanggang mamatay. Wow, just one of the many songs. Because of you, I want. Because of you, I want to live. Because of you, until I die. This is beautiful. The children were, in turn, amused and amazed at Pandisal's songs. They had no idea that their classmate, who hardly spoke a word to anyone, could sing so beautifully. They clapped after every song and sat on the edge of their seats so they could hear Pandisal better. Before long, her beautiful voice lulled them into a sweet slumber. Mm. A lot of Filipinas, Filipinos, Filipinex are known for singing. We have a natural gift. Pandisal, you sing so well. You should join the glee club, Miss Flowers whispered. On Monday, I'll accompany you to Miss Kanta personally and tell her what a great singing voice you have. Kanta means sing. Oh, thank you, Miss Flowers, said Pandisal. I've always wanted to join the glee club, only I was always too shy to try out. It looks like Pandisal is getting more and more courageous. Nonsense, said Miss Flowers. You didn't, needn't be afraid. Just now, you've made your classmates so happy with your songs. Think what you can do if you sing for a bigger crowd. Everyone is, is enjoying her beautiful songs. Soon, Mang Baking arrived with a mechanic. They poked and tapped and poked and tapped the engine and finally the bus hummed to life. They were on their way back to school. Hmm. Bandisad, you saved the day! Miss Flowers said as they got down from the bus. You've taught us a great game, fed us delicious food, and sang for us many beautiful songs. You're one of my best students in class. That's for sure, breadstick, croissant, and Danish chorused. You're all right, the others exclaimed. Wow, Spandisel has been accepted in her class. This is wonderful. That afternoon, Bandisal rushed to their Nipa hut, her heart full of happiness and joy. She no longer felt like the odd one out in school. For now, she felt unique, a person like no other, with something wonderful she can share with others. And she can finally join the glee club! Wow! Hmm. Maybe I like the name Bandisal after all, she told herself as she helped her mother prepare their supper. Bandisal back at home in her nipa hut with her mom and her brother. 
I hope you enjoyed this book. It looks like at the end of the day, Bantisal was really able to be proud of her Filipino culture, of her Filipino food, games, and songs. Speaking of songs, I have a song about Bandisal. It is in the Tagalog language and it goes like this. Bandisal at queso, Bandisal and cheese. Ay masarap, is delicious. Bandisal at gatas. Pandisal and milk, ay masustansya, is nutritious. Pandisal at itlog, pandisal and egg, ay pampalusog, is nourishing. Araw at gabi, day and night, ito ay mabuti. It is good. Let's sing that together. Sing with Nanay. Pandisal at queso ay masarap. Pandisal at gatas ay masustansya. Pandisal at itlog ay pampalusog. Araw at gabi, ito ay mabuti. Singing about pandisal and reading a book about pandisal saves the day makes me feel kind of hungry for pandisal. <gasps> Look who's here, everyone! What's that in your hand? You want to show everyone? <laughs> what is that, Anak? Pandisal. Pandisal. Wow! Thank you so much for bringing pandisal. That's going to be a yummy snack. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us on Sing with Nanai. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye now. Sing with